headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving, and storage studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Jade Warshaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life and your money. It's a free call at 888-825-5225. It is free, and some say the advice is worth exactly what you pay for it. So jump in here. We'll hang out together and uh, solve all of life's problems. You can call and ask our opinion. We are an expert on our opinion. We know what's happening with that. So jump in here. Let's talk. 888-825-5225. Two two five. Melissa is going to start this hour in Indianapolis. Hi, Melissa. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. I'm really excited to talk to you guys. Hi, Jade. How are you? Good, thank you. So, um, my husband and I have five kids, and we're on baby step seven. Woo! Woohoo! And uh, yeah, um, but I share my four oldest kids with an ex-husband, and we have a current court order that says we would each claim two kids on our taxes. And but my ex's income has gone up significantly over the past several years, and continues to go up. Um, and I found out recently that he's being—he told me he's being phased out of the child tax credit, and probably won't benefit from actually claiming the kids. Um, in the next couple of years. And so I was wondering if it would be worth the hassle for me to, um, you know, pursue getting permission from the court and all of that for me to claim all the kids myself, or if I should just let that go. Well, I mean, it's worth some money. The question is how much it's going to cost to fool with it. If your attorney, if you guys can order, uh, can agree to this, both of you sign off on it, your attorney could just file with the court an agreed order. Right. So it I should not be this, complicated. You know, it shouldn't. The reason that I even, you know, had mention of it and, and knew about it was because I received this email from my ex who said, hey, you know, I just thought I might, you know, reach out to you and see maybe in 2023, you know, you could claim all the kids. I'll just let you claim all the kids. And in exchange, then, you know, whatever the child tax credit is for that year, for those two kids that you'd be claiming of mine, then we would decrease the child support by the same amount. Why would you bother? Year. <laughs> exactly. And you can, I you can stay home that. and break even. <laughs> okay. Right? I mean, I, 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 I don't get how this is helpful. It's just a favor no. to him at that point. I mean, it's okay mm-hmm. if you want to do him a favor. Yeah. It helps yeah. him, but it helps you zero. Okay. Well, that's kind of what I figured, and yeah. it doesn't... I mean, ma- like mathematically, it. you follow me? <laughs> right. Yeah, you're going to okay. get the credit, but he's going to reduce it by that amount, so you're going to end up with exactly the same amount of money when the smoke clears and he's going to end up with more money. Yeah. And it doesn't necessarily help the kids or, no, it doesn't affect the kids at all. all, I'm guessing this is a pattern. He has lived his life by. I win, you lose. Mm. For, for sure, which is why I saw the email and thought, well, he's definitely not going to be helping me out. So that's very suspicious. Like, what do you really want? What do you tra- <laughs> what do you what do you get out of this? What does so he really want? He wants back, money. This is a, this said, improves his financial situation. Well, I'm being phased out, so therefore, you know, yeah. I thought this would be more fair, and then yeah. you know, I would get to I would get to keep the the, the state. Yeah. Tax I mean, you can I, run the numbers yeah. on it and figure out how many dollars it actually amounts to in your all's life. Uh, and yeah. you could offer to split it with him instead of him being the only one benefiting, if it's even worth it, if that even pays the court cost to file the agreed order. Right. But the other thing I thought was I could offer to like to go ahead and file all of them for me and claim them, but then put whatever extra money I get into like toward college costs or something, because our oldest is now 15. She's a sophomore. Well, that would be a fair so, offer. But e- like either that. way, y- you need to benefit enough that it – Make it um, worth it. That that you net net net. If you have to put it all into college and it reduces what he has to put into college, then no, you're just paying his bill for him, right? And you're doing his work for him again, carrying his water for him again. So no, I mean he needs to benefit half of this. You need to benefit half of it, and it needs to be worth it to file the order. In the actual savings, it may not be worth it when you add it all up and then look at the legal cost. It's probably just don't screw with it, is my guess. But it might be enough. I forget. What, what is the child tax credit? Did you look it up? I don't even know. 2023, it's 2000 per kid. Yeah, yeah which okay. is why he was so saying, So $4,000 yeah, tax like savings. 4, yeah, so if you got $2,000, he got $2,000. cost you $500 to do the order. Then that's fair. Yeah. You get nothing. Our- he gets $4,000. No, thank you. (laughs) Well, the first way you said it, it sounded like a good idea. But then when you added in the part that he was going to reduce 
you know, right. that then I said, oh, I don't know. Yeah, th- then we just go, and yeah, there's a pattern. Here. I mean, it's okay, but uh, if you just want to do him a favor, but um, but that's it, it. I, yeah, I. As usu- as usually the in these situations, cost. there's more to the story, as Paul Harvey used to say, the rest of the story. All right, <laughs> Charlene's in Charleston, South Carolina. Hey, Charlene, what's up? Hi there. Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. How can we help? Um, yes, I'm wondering, I am in, you know, close to $250,000 of medical school education debt, and I also have an auto loan. I paid off all my credit cards. I'm on baby step two, so I'm working on, you know, paying off my debt. I have $1,000 in savings. I'm sticking to my budget. But my question is, I'm just worried about not investing and not saving because, um, you know, paying off my school loans is going to take me several years, probably. So I'm just like, is it really smart to only have $1,000 in my savings if an emergency happens? I don't know if that's going to be enough if I don't have a credit card to like. Mm. On. How old are you? I'm 34. How yeah. long if you get crazy because you're on baby step two, how long is it going to take you to pay off $250,000 of student loans? I calculated it, and if I'm, like, really good and stick to my budget, I can probably do it in five years. Five years? What is your income? $195,000. you are wussing. Are you single? You're wussing. I am. I'm single, no children, and I don't own a home. I'm with you Dave. You can only pay off $50,000 out of a $200,000 income. Yeah, I'm with Dave. Wimpy! You got to cut it down. You're killing me. I can live. I can only live on one hundred and fifty thousand. You're killing me. Look now. Is, now is the time to get this done. You, you're unattached. You don't have kids. There is no reason in the world that you can't get scorched earth on this. Well, two years. Fair, I only you have bring two years. To one, you get to do this in two years. Taxes. You get to do this in two years. I think you need to flip it. Right now, you're only paying off fifty thousand a year at that rate. You need to be living on fifty thousand a year and put the rest towards this. Two years. Oh, gosh. Yeah. No life. No life. You gave up your life when you went to med school. (laughs) Here's the thing. If you keep making... I love to travel. Yeah, I know. I love a lot lot of stuff. If you keep making excuses why you can't do more, do you want to know what you're going to look up in five years and you're still going to have this debt? It's got to be more painful for you to stay like this than it is for you to change. You're a doc. Right. Are you an MD? Yeah, I am. Okay, what, what's your spe- you have a specialization? Yeah, I'm a pediatrician. Oh, okay. All right, cool. All right, good. Well, your income's not going to go shooting through the roof then, but you're probably no, going to, you're probably, probably going to see it. some increases. And Charlene, you are a person who knows how to delay pleasure for a win. Mm-hmm. We know that about you because you actually went all the way through med school. That's delaying pleasure for a win. Now you get to do it again. Delay pleasure for a win. Go to live on nothing and clean this. The faster you clean this up, the richer you're going to be. Mm-hmm. The faster you clean this up, the less stress you're going to have. And the you'll faster be able you clean this up, the more, more you're going to like the person in the mirror. I would cut it to nothing. No, nothing. No eating out, no travel, no nothing. Get out of debt. That's what I would do. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything, from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to save up to 40% off everything site-wide. Go to Blinds.com for more information.
Hey, if you're a new listener and you want to dive deeper into this Ramsey baby steps, all this behind the scenes talk, debt snowballs, all these things we talk about, click on get started at RamseySolutions.com. Completely free. We'll help you figure out the best next step for your financial journey based on exactly where you are today. RamseySolutions.com. Click, click get started. Our question of the day comes from Jacob in the Ramsey Baby Steps Millionaires group on Facebook. He says this, he says, I'm 20 years old and I'm looking to buy a house within six months to a year. Besides having 20% down, what other tips would you recommend for a first time home buyer? Also, is there anything that I need to look out for? Um, yeah, I would say there's a couple of things to keep in mind. I think it's great that you're putting 20% down. Uh, we would say to do a deal where you're payment is no more than 25% of your take home. And that's taxes, insurance, all included in a conventional loan. And I love that you're putting 20% down because then you can avoid PMI, which is private mortgage insurance. And it's just an additional cost there. But with 20% down, you can avoid that. But I feel like you're in pretty good shape. I mean, other than that, it sounds sounds pretty good to me. Yeah. A couple of things. Good idea. Good question, by the way. 15-year fixed rate, 25% of your take home pay. Um, Always, everyone, anytime you buy a piece of real estate, get title insurance 100% of the time. Anytime you're buying a piece of property that is not a traditional subdivision lot, meaning it's very, very predictable, um, always get a survey. So if you, you know, I bought three acres that turned out to be 1.75. No, that, yeah, no, we, uh, we, you get a survey on it okay now you got a standard subdivision lot that is pre-platted and has changed hands three or four times you don't have to worry about that it is what it is but uh if you're buying something otherwise get a survey get title insurance and get a home inspection get a home inspection you're 20 years old you're not an expert on much of anything in that house uh unless you just happen to be an electrician or something and then you would be right but um yeah get it get a home inspection period um I bought and sold several thousand pieces of real estate. I get a home inspection. Mm. Last house I bought, I got one. Okay. Um, I can go in there and scratch around in the crawl space and try to figure it out. But for what it costs, let somebody else do it. Right. Um, that's the thing. Uh, don't buy a house that is a great price, but is ugly from the street. First house I bought was that. I got a great deal, and this house was ugly from the street. <laughs> there, there's no fixing ugly. Yeah, that's you hard can't to fix. fix ugly. Okay, it's just still going to be no. Well, we could we could no. Don't 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 try to fix ugly. Ugly, you just look like a, you know. Oh, had plastic surgery and you shouldn't have bothered. Oh, don't do it. You know, I mean, oh, I mean, don't. You just can't fix it. Leave it alone. That's just a good point. don't don't. It's not a good buy because if you get a good buy on it now, when you get ready to sell it, you know what you have? An ugly house. And you're going to give somebody else a good deal because nobody wants an ugly house. So that there's a reason it was cheap when you bought it, and there'll be a reason it's cheap when you sell it. So, that's a good point. And that's also true with the actual floor plan. I bought a house one time. No, actually, I didn't buy I rented it one time that was a four-bedroom. But to get to one of the bedrooms, you had to walk through the other bedroom. Oh, yeah. That's terrible. Terrible this is, floor uh, plan. We used to call these country-built houses where you just keep adding on. Adding on, adding Rambling. on, adding on, and <laughs> and you just go, you know, yeah. Well, there, there there was actually no plan from the beginning, yeah. and then you've got a, no plan. So be careful with that kind of stuff. You can you can get excited, particularly on your first buy, and uh, try to buy something that's a little bit boring. That's good advice. You know, don't try to like reinvent the word. I'm going to do a rehab. Oh God, no. Well, Please. I mean, you could pick you could pick something that's got things that you can fix. Like if the carpet's super ugly, there's things that are outdated. Car- yeah, like carpet. you can you can yeah. change that, but yeah, you can put or you can put the gutters up. That's right. fine. But don't right. tell me you gotta change the whole no, yeah, I gotta tear out. Yeah. I gotta add no 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 no. Just you, you just boring means less risk going in and less risk going out. And so a nice little house with a little picket fence mm-hmm. and little bushes out front and it looks you look at it from the street and everybody goes, "Oh, that's cute." That's the that's where you want to start. What do you think about corner lots? Because when we bought in our neighborhood before we came here, we thought we had a good lot cuz we were on the corner by the gate. And for us it was great. We thought, "Oh, we could take the dog out. It's easy access." But then when we got ready to sell, 
It you know, sold for less. Corner lots are a mixed blessing because generally corner lots present well from the street. Right. But you have no freaking backyard. You got this little t- tiny triangle back there where they cram the house back inside at a 45. And so it depends on the subdivision, depends on the lot size, right. all those kinds of things. But generally speaking, you get the, a nice presentation from mm-hmm. the front and then you're pinched in the back. Yeah. That's generally what you get. So watch for that. That's it's not the end of the world, but watch for that. Again, if you've got a concern when you're looking at it, know that they're, the buyer, when you get ready to sell, it's going to have the same concern. So just right. don't ra- don't get so excited. You rationalize your way into stupidity. I know a guy who's done that a lot in his life, and um, <laughs> that's how he has a radio show. So be careful. The open phones at 888-825-5225. Jason is up next in Detroit. Hey, Jason, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for the call. I appreciate it. Sure. Um, Dave, um, yeah, uh, you, you've, you and God have changed my life. <laughs> so I, uh, appreciate all that you've done over the years. Um, pretty fortunate to live, um, completely debt free, including my house, um, at 48 years old. Way to go, dude. And, um, thanks. Thanks. My, my wife and I have um, worked pretty hard to, uh, c- kind of get there financially. Um, I've actually been in uh, full-time ministry most of my adult life. Um, and uh, currently, I am part time uh, on staff in a church, and then part time I operate a food pantry. And um, I absolutely love my work. I, I, I love what I do. Um, the issue that I, I struggle with a little bit is I, I, I hardly make any money um, being in two nonprofit situations. Um, my wife's a school teacher and, um, has been for 20 plus years. So she's kind of at the top of the income scale. Um, we're doing all the things, um, we have zero debt. Um, we're, um, you know, she has the pension and then we've got, um, some other, uh, investments and that, that sort of thing. But my question is, you know, I literally, I mean, with what I do, I, I, take home a couple thousand bucks a month, um, at this stage in the game. And I'm about 30 years into my career and I guess I'm just trying to decide, um, is that okay for me? Um, you know, is it, I, I, I don't, well, I guess that's what I, you're, you're <laughs> calling about it. So you don't think it is. Well, I'm just, I guess I just need some perspective. I, I'm, I, I love what I do and I, 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 you know, I get to help people every day and, um, it's extremely rewarding work and I can see myself doing it until I die. I don't, you know, I, I want to die with my boots on, but, um, without any debt and, you know, still being able to set aside, you know, funds for the future, um, I, I guess, um, I would love to make more money, but I just don't know if I'm ever going to find that in kind of the nonprofit world. Um, so I guess I just was hoping for a little insight on that. Mm-hmm. Well, you're obviously a good man. You're obviously a guy who loves to help people. You're pastoring, you're running a food pantry. You got a big old heart and, uh, there's no question about Thank that. You. Um, 80% of pastors in North America are bivocational. Mm-hmm. They have a day job. Mm-hmm. That's a wild number. Mm-hmm. Um, and did you start this food pantry? Uh, I did not start it. However, I took it over and had to completely revamp yeah. it. Um, it's kind of yours. And, yeah, I thought and, so. I kind of smelled that yeah. the way you were talking about it. Yeah. There's nothing yeah, wrong yeah. spiritually, morally, eth- ethically with what you're doing. Nothing wrong with it at all. There's also nothing wrong with exploring some other avenues that you could utilize that wonderful large heart of yours to help people. And in the process of serving them, you made more money. There's nothing wrong with that either. That's the seat I sit in. So, I mean, there's lots of ways you can help people uh, and love people well. And they love paying you for it, by the way. Um, So maybe a counseling ministry, maybe some other things you can add on. I don't know what it is, but I, I would look towards that kind of a thing. We've been doing business at Ramsey for more than 30 years. By now, we're a well-oiled machine, but it wasn't always that way. 
Yes, we've always had a vision, always had determination, and a drive to help people. But what we didn't have was one central place to access all our numbers so that we could get further ahead or quickly see when we needed to pivot. We were always jumping back and forth between different systems and spreadsheets. So when NetSuite by Oracle helped us wrangle our revenue, inventory, expenses, and more into one place, it was a game changer. And NetSuite's number one cloud financial system can help your business gain the same visibility. Because businesses thrive on timely data. And NetSuite's real-time analytics can help your business have immediate access to your numbers daily so you always know where you stand and you can move quickly. So go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey today and set up a free product tour. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Thank you for joining us, America. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Annie is next in Nashville. Hi, Annie. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. How are you guys doing today? Better than we deserve. How can we help? So my husband and I are first-time home buyers. We just started the process, and I've been talking to a local mortgage broker, and he gave us some information on 30-year versus 15-year mortgages. Um, we want to do the 15-year. We're trying to follow the plan. We have a sizable down payment. Um, but he did say, which I thought this is kind of strange, I just don't understand this, that if we want the 15-year, we are required to do a rate buy-down to get like a little lower interest rate. Um, so I just didn't know what that was. I never heard of that before. He said it would be about a point or point and a half to get the rate buy-down. <laughs> Uh, uh, you need to call Churchill Mortgage and get with a new mortgage broker, okay? There are two things okay. you can do to buy down rates. Uh, I th think I'm hearing that he just wants you to pay points. That is not a true buy down. That's just points. Each point is 1% of the loan amount and will reduce your interest rate by about an eighth, between an eighth and a quarter, somewhere in there, but usually around an eighth of a percent, which means it takes you eight years to recoup that. No, thank you, I'll pass. So pay, paying points is not a good thing, and I'm pretty sure, by the way, that increases what goes in his pocket at the closing. That's why I'm um, rolling my eyes a bit here. I don't know if you can hear it over the radio, but I was. <laughs> and so um, the an actual buy-down is a like a 3-2-1 buy-down, and it would be a 3% reduction the first year, or a 2-1 buy-down, 2% 2 reduction the first year, 1% reduction the second year, and then it goes on up to the regular rate. And all that is, is you're just giving yourself some money up front to subsidize yourself. Now, if the seller pays your 2-1 buy down, like in the old days when things were a little calmer than they are right now, a builder might pay for a 2-1 buy down. Okay, in other words, they would pay 2%, pay the, you know, just at 0.02, right? What it's going to cost you to reduce the rate by 2% and then 0.1. So it's going to cost them 3% out of pocket to do a 2-1 buy-down, or 6% out of pocket to do a 3-2-1 buy-down. If the seller pays that, that's free money. You got a deal, okay? But if you're if you're going to pay for your own buy-down, uh, that's uh, not as bad as points, but it's there's no reason to do it. Okay. I, does that make sense? You understand the difference in what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Points are prepaid interest. Both of these are prepaid interest. Points are a form of prepaid interest, and one point will reduce the uh, for roughly an eighth of a percent APR for the life of the loan. A true buy-down is just, it's a 2-1 buy-down. You take your current rate, let's call it 6%. It'd be 4% the first year, 5% the second year, and 6% from then on. And you pay that difference up front at the closing 
which you could have just done that for yourself if you're just swapping pockets. So actually, mm-hmm. let me think about this, then. If the seller's not paying it, we're going to do neither of these. Mm-hmm. That's the moral of the story. Okay. Is the seller paying it? He acted like I was, to get the 15-year, this is something I would have to do. Why? Do a rate 15 years is generally cheaper than a 30-year anyway. And but, are they saying you can't qualify? So he said he said that the thirty year would be six point eight seven five, and if I fifteen year would be the same unless I did this rate buy down, then I could nope. get like six point five or something. That doesn't sound right. New mortgage broker, new one. Okay. <laughs> he just lost the business. Yeah, because fifteen year quoted at what we call a par quote zero point zero origination is always cheaper than a thirty year. Ninety well, percent of the time it is mm-hmm. okay. And for you, you know, he, he's monkeying with you to put he to line his pocket. So it's, 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 that's what I think. I mean, I'm not 100% sure, but having done about a bazillion of these, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I, I, I go to Churchill, talk to them, and see if they give you the exact same thing. If they do, I'll shut up and say that I was wrong about the guy's character. But when is it better to just make a larger down payment as opposed to attempting a three, two, one? The larger down payment uh, doesn't reduce, well, it would re- reduce the payment, but it doesn't reduce it as much mathematically. Um, so actually it would be, no, it wouldn't, it wouldn't because. I it, guess what I'm saying is there, is there math that you need to do to find out what that point would be? No, it's, it's don't subsidize your own loan is the moral of the story. Both of them are a form of subsidizing your own interest rate. Prepaying it. By prepaying it in their different forms, points or buy downs. Mm-hmm. So if the seller is paying points or the seller is paying a buy down, that's different. Right. And all things being equal, meaning no points, no origination, which is called a par quote, your 30 should match your, your 15 should be a little bit less. A, it should be a quarter of a point, half a point less uh, on your APR. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Generally speaking, it is. Now, there might be a glitch in the environment at this moment in the bond market that's doing that. I, I'm not 100% sure, but most of the time throughout 30, almost 40 years of being in the real estate mm-hmm. and around real estate business, that's what my experience has been. So, but double check, you need to get another quote. I, I'm, I, sm- I just smell, um, I, I don't, it, it doesn't smell. <laughs> it doesn't smell right. That's yeah, all right, Dave. Let's just leave it at that. All right. Jake <laughs> is in Milwaukee. Hi, Jake. How are you? Uh, hi, Dave. Hi, Jade. Hi. Um, I'm... Uh, hi, I'm on baby step two, um, and I'm kind of in a little situation where I don't know how much I owe. I My father passed in 2016, and he didn't have a will. The only thing he ever did, he, he told me, is that he was going to set me as a beneficiary, and if anything happened, that you know I would have to take care of it for, for my sister, for myself and my sister. Um, and I mean, so he's only ever told me that verbally. And well, when he passed, we got 200,000, um, in a policy and it's coming up. I've been paying my sister monthly so she can go and finish school debt free, which she has now graduated. Um, and so there's about 5,000 left on just the half. So 95,000 paid. And I kind of don't know how much more I owe her because all the things I've done with the with the money have been kind of commingled with my own finances. Well, you certainly owe the five thousand, right? Because that totals one hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah, no, no doubt. Okay, then have you invested the money during this time? I I did. I invested um, in hundred thousand of it in real estate. Okay, that would be uh, your hundred thousand, and then I invested others in parts and stock. Well, okay, and well, I would have been I would have done better with your four fund portfolio, but I, I've actually lost money on the part I invested in stocks because. Okay, I mean, I, and I don't know what you owe her. You don't owe her anything legally. No, morally, you told your dad morally. she would get half the money. So we know she's getting the 5000 Even if you screwed around and lost some of her half, then you would still cover that 5000 morally if you're doing what your dad asked you to do, right? Yeah. 
So how much money have you made on the real estate? Um, on paper, I mean, before, you know, selling fees and all that, uh, it's probably like 75000 Okay. What do you make a year? Uh, actually, I, I make about that, seventy five. What do you think the right thing to do is? Hello? I, I mean, probably just... Probably just cut that in half and, and say and give, and give her half of that. Yeah, but, I think you invested your half in the real estate personally, um, I, and I think you lost some of her half. So I think you cover the five, and if you want to throw another ten on there for fun to make you feel better, that's fine. But I don't think you owe her anything much more than that. And I'm certainly not going to have to sell the real estate to get the, her half out of that. That's so convoluted yeah. and wicked. No, thank you. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. Our 2023 live event schedule is jam-packed and sold out coast to coast, baby. Hey, man, we've had a blast. We were just in Indianapolis and then over in Austin, Texas. Uh, April 24th, we'll be in Salt Lake City, Utah with Rachel Cruz, George Camel, Christina Ellis, and me. May 2nd will be Jade Warshaw. No, that's Christina Ellis. You were you did the first two. That's, that's right. It. Okay. Uh, May 2nd, Anaheim, California. Dr. John Deloney, Ken Coleman, Christina Ellis, and me. And Smart Conference is back, and we're going to kick it off, kick it up a notch with a full weekend here at Nashville. This will be the inaugural event at the uh, Ramsey Event Center whoop, whoop. where they're putting the final touches up there today, putting bushes down and rolling out the sod, and which is kind of like rolling out gold. And uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> and we have the Money and Marriage. Uh, and by the way, that's April 14th and 15th. There's a few tickets left. Uh, RamseySolutions.com events for all of these. Salt Lake City, Anaheim, Nashville for Smart Conference here on our campus. The Money and Marriage Getaway, a chance for you and your spouse to disconnect from everyday life. Spend a few days focusing on your marriage. That'll be here in Nashville. October 19 through 21. Dr. John Deloney and Rachel Cruz make your plans to get to all of these. Don't miss any of them. RamseySolutions.com slash events. Good all stuff. Right, uh, note to everyone that is over 18 and breathing, do not leave verbal instructions to your heirs. Uh. Do a will. It's the responsible adult thing to do do a will go to mama bear legal forms.com get you a will state specific do a will if you have moved states you need a new will because state law handles your estate so you need to do a will if you hate your relatives oh. leave a large estate with mixed instructions verbally to all of them they will spend the next 25 years of their life fighting this is how you can screw up a family Oh, yeah. How you can screw up and leave your son feeling guilty for not having properly taken care of his little sister because he didn't have good instructions. Just split it with her. I'm not going to do it, Will. Oh, you're killing me. And can I take it a step further? Can you talk to your family members about the will? Hello. Do a reading of the will. Do a reading while you're of alive. the will. If you're going to piss someone off, do it while you're alive. Please. You're doing cocaine, Junior. You're out of the will. Go ahead and tell them that. Maybe they'll get off the cocaine. Who knew? You know, so, yeah, we don't. We do not leave inheritance to heroin addicts. And so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Susie. You're not in the will. But Dave, there's. Can I just say, as as this generation talking to my parents and our generation of people talking to our parents, they don't want to talk to us about money. I know. We can we can ask, hey, mom, dad, you know, I'm trying to plan. I want to know about long term care. I want to know about your will. I want to know. And they don't want to tell us what's going on. I know. And I'm yelling at them right now. Yeah. Let yeah. them know. Uh, 
you're talking to my generation, I guess. Hey, my generation, you're being stupid. Do a will. 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 I don't care what you do with your money. It's your money. But do it on purpose. Live an act of diligence, an act of intentionality. Keep the government's hands off of it. It gets so convoluted and screwed up. The lawyers end up with everything, and people end up pissed off for decades over a piece of furniture. Mama said you were going to leave that to her. Oh, gee. Yep. Uh, it's a piece of, oh, uh, come on. Leave it, do a will. Do a will, do a will, do a will, do a will, do a will. It's easy. And my wife actually cornered me on this the other day because I've got a very detailed estate plan. Mm-hmm. We have the uh, update on the estate plan every year, a mm-hmm. meeting with my whole family and my leadership team here at Ramsey. And this is what happens if Dave dies this year. I call it the Monty Python move, m- meeting. I'm feeling much <laughs> better. It's just a flesh wound. Yeah. So, um, but it's uh, it's awkward as crud. To do this sure. meeting, you know, I'm, sure. I'm, I'm here. I'm okay. I'm right here in the corner. No, this is what happens if Dave dies this year, right? So, uh, but I hadn't done it like I have an antique water ski collection. I have a, Interesting. I have a gun collection. Okay. I have too many cars. And Sharon's the other day goes, what do you want me to do with all that crap? And I'm like, I don't know. Do whatever you want to with it. And she goes, Dave Ramsey says have a plan. <laughs> it's, I like, like, <laughs> it's not in, you don't have it. So it's I, not had, a I had to write up a document, just, not there to do with go. the wheel, but just say, here's what you do with the water skis. Here's what you do with the <laughs> cars. And here's what you do with the guns. And um, here, here's who you call and uh, which of our kids can help you yeah. with that process. And because she wouldn't even. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Look, I'm not mad at that. No, I that, feel like that's that should a good be, call. That's a good call. A good call. I mean, she called me out on my own stuff. So there you go. Do a will. I do a will. All right. Kareem is with us in Tampa. Hi, Kareem. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Your wife sounds like a very smart woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We know, we've known that for a very long time. And I'm the one to, and yet I'm the one doing the show. So how can I help? <laughs> well, I'm really looking forward to listening to your great advice. But right a little bit first, I just wanted to mention my big brother, Gil, because he's the one that turned me on to listening to your podcast. And he followed your plan and to become debt free. And he is on his way to becoming a millionaire. So wow. Way to go, Gil. Gil. Way to go, Gil. Way to go, Gil. He's listening, so I'm sure he's excited. Yay, Gil. <laughs> All right. So my question, this is this is the good stuff. All right. So we have an investment property. Okay, it's a condo. We owe about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars on the condo and it's worth about one point three million. Oh wow. I hate it when that I know happens. it's wonderful. You know, Tampa is booming right now. So yeah. we're really lucky to have come in right before us. And the idea is this. Um, we bought the condo at 350, so our capital gains is going to be extremely high. It's going to be in the millions. No, and we don't know what to do because in a year and a half, our five-year arm ends, and we're going to have to renegotiate our interest rate. And right now, our interest rate is three percent, and we are terrified to find out what the interest rate is going to be. So. We don't know what to do with this. Do we do a 1031? Uh, we also owe about $900,000 on our current home. And our home rate right now is at 2.65%. So what do we do? What do we do? There's so many options. What's the best option? Well, you've done very well on it. Congratulations. That's Thank fabulous. You. If you do sell it, your Thank capital you. gains rate will be 15% unless you're making over 450000 household income, are you? Yeah, it's going to be 20 Yeah, okay, it'll so be 20. 20% on probably over a million dollars. So it's going to be 200000 215000 somewhere in there. Exactly. That's your, your taxes exactly. to sell it. If you do that, you pay off your house. That's one option, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you won't quite have enough to pay off your house, but you probably have some other money. Um That'd be a cool option. Obviously, a 1031 defers those gains. It's a trading for another property. If your only reason for doing that is to avoid the fear of the mortgage, how much money do you have? Mm -hmm. Um, In terms of cash flow or... Let me ask two questions. How much cash do you have, not counting retirement? Cash and investments, non-retirement. Okay, so we have, I would say, total, total... About mm, 200000 Okay. And what's your household income? 
Uh, about 500000 Okay, so if you want to keep this, just pay it off. I should just pay off the condo? Yeah, and then you don't have to worry about the five. Because I'm worried about the five years. It's kind of funny because you make $500,000 a year and you only have a $250,000 mortgage. <laughs> I'm not worried. I mean, it's not. There's nothing. You, you said you were. You said you were. I'm. I'm freaked well, about the interest rates. I got a call coming. You have a five-year call, right? I mean, you have five yeah. years to make yeah. the decision. So, sometime in the next five years, preferably the next eighteen no, months. No, one year. I have one year. One year. It's oh, I misunderstood. Oh, I did too. I thought you said it. No, said, no, no, no. It's our five-year arm is ending in a year. That's oh, and it, is it going to adjust, to or is it going? To, is it a call? It's going to adjust, I, right? I think it's going to get. Yeah, it's going to be adjusting. Oh, it's just an adjustment. So that's not the end of the world. But I, yeah, I would pay no, no, it no, off. I, don't know I, I would try to pay it off and keep it if you like it. If you like the property, the cleanest thing, just pay it off and keep it. I wouldn't be motivated to sell it by the mortgage, not with your income and your cash. And I think you like it. It sounds like she does. I, they I, like I, the area. I kind of like it. It's done well for it's them. It's been sweet, but it's just up to you. I mean, if you're going to keep it, if you want to, if the only thing driving this is the mortgage, just pay the mortgage off in the next year. You can do that. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jade. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. Headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving, and storage studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Jade Washall, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us. Open phones here at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Anna is with us in San Francisco. Hey, Anna, how are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Okay. So I recently went on a game show, and I had the opportunity to play for my dream car. I got so <laughs> close, but I lost. And it's just killing me. I'm so sad about losing and not getting this car. So my husband and I talked it over, and um, we want to know, A, can we maybe afford to buy this car? And B, if we can, is it a wise thing for us to do? Because sometimes dream cars are just dream cars, right? I I am sorry. I'm trying to recover from all of this in the moment. Um, what is the car <laughs> and how much does it cost? You know the answer it's to all of BM this, by yeah, the way. It's I'm a BMW X3 and it's $50,000 on the money. How much money do you make? Your personal uh, income. Oh, well, to get combined, because I don't work right now, is about 175 a year. Okay, and the car is 50000 Yes. Yeah. What, what mm -hmm. is it? Brand new. It's a BMW X3. Oh, you said that. Okay. All right. So mm -hmm. do you currently have debt? No debt. Mm -mm. No debt. Do you currently have savings? We have just over a hundred grand in savings, yes. And what do you drive right now? A minivan. <laughs> what, does, what does he drive? We just have the minivan. That's it. That's you have one have. car to your name. Um, we have one car to our name. We do have another car that we are kind of borrowing on and off. It's like a little tiny, um, like a, what do you call it? Like a Honda CRV. Mm -hmm. We're borrowing it on and off if we occasionally need a second car from uh, my mother-in-law. I'm assuming you're not to a million dollar net worth yet, or am I wrong? Um, actually we are, we are because of our house. Okay. And we have some 401k is now here's, here's our rule of thumb. We would normally say that if you're a millionaire, you could purchase a brand new vehicle, but we also say that we don't want more than, you know, you don't want more than 50% of your annual income tied up in vehicles. So that's why I was asking what else you have. You checked both boxes. Oh, and you got to pay cash. You checked all three yeah. boxes. Okay. When when did you uh, no. when was the game show episode? When did, when were you on it? 
Uh, about a month ago. And you got the fifty. You got the fifty thousand to pay cash for it, right? We do, but then it just drops our savings to about fifty grand. Yeah, I got that. I. But which is still fifty grand is still three to six months expenses for you, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're still in good shape. Uh So uh, just walk me through. I'll be honest with you. Starting out this call, I was like, this call is crazy. But you do check all the boxes, but you still sound like, "Uh, I don't know. Like at first you sounded really excited about it. And now it's almost like as I walked you through it, you're feeling more sobered about it. And now you're feeling like you don't want to. So explain that to me. Well, So before I went on the show, we had sat in this car, we had driven this car, and we had said to ourselves, hey, if someone gave us this car for free, absolutely we'll take it. But Uh is it wise? We weren't sure if it was wise. And so we walked away from the lot several times not buying this car. But then I go on this show, and it's right there, and I play all these rounds, and I'm like 50, 50 percent away from it, and I lose it. (laughs) And I'm like... Oh, maybe I do really want this car. <laughs> well, the game show the game show aside, I'm sorry you lost, but the, what game show was it? Can you just say it? Or are you not allowed Price to? Price is right. Price is right. I love it. Um, game show aside, you lo- I feel like because it was offered to you for free, you were like, yeah. yes, I won. And now that it's not free anymore, you're realizing, man, $50,000 is a lot of money. Here's the thing. You can afford it. You get sounds like you guys have sacrificed to win. You've been driving an old minivan. I, if you can afford it, and it, here's the thing. If you can't afford that one, what if you got a, a year or two used? Would that scratch the yeah. itch and, and still make you feel like you're being responsible? Because here's the thing. You would be being responsible even if you bought it outright. But right now Mm -hmm. it sounds like you're dealing in emotion and it doesn't feel responsible. Would it feel responsible if you bought it two years used? I I think that would feel better. Um, I think what feels irresponsible is cutting my savings in half. It feels kind of scary to do that. You guys have done a great job with money to get where you are. And so you have good instincts. And this is bothering you. I used to have a friend on investments. He would say, when in doubt, don't. And you have so much doubt around this. I don't think it's going to bring you as much thrill as it is going to bring you loss of peace. Just you. Mm. You're, again, you're, you've checked every box. You're not violating a single thing that we teach by buying the car. But you've got to sleep but at you, night. You've got, you, this is bought. Now, you've got to pay cash for it. Okay. But, uh, mm-hmm. but if you're not mm-hmm. going to, if it's, I'm, I'm a little bit afraid just listening to you that it's going <laughs> to take more from you than it adds to you. Do you know what I'm saying? I just wanted the car for free. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. She I can't had the opportunity to have it for I'm free. I'm not the host. I can't help you with that. I'm on the Dave Ramsey <laughs> show or the Ramsey show, not the price is right. Otherwise I would just give you the car. But, um, yeah, I get that I, though. I, I would go get, I, I think I'm with Jade because of the hesitation not because of anything else, because it's bothering you. I think I would go buy a $30,000 version of this X3, which is a great car, by the way. They're very cool. Um, drive that for a while. If you guys continue making 175000 a year and you continue saving money and you continue, you'll be able to drive anything you want to drive. Mm-hmm. The truck I drove over here today, I would never have dreamed I would buy a truck like that, you know, like 10 years ago. And now it's like, oh, yeah, it's okay, you know. But I, I never drank, even though I had the money 10 years ago, I would never. But emotionally, I'm you in a different. You weren't ready to buy it? Is that I, what emotionally, it Emotionally, I'm in a different place. I had, you know, I, there was no angst. I went, yeah. Sharon, 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 you okay with this? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Kind of a five-minute conversation. I'm like, oh, oh, I love order it. Order the dadgum thing, you know. So, but I love it, it. But, but the first time I moved up, I remember the angst yeah. that she's feeling. I remember this sense of, am, am I being dumb? I don't want to be dumb. That's a good. That's a good thing to have those breaks on you. Way I, to go. I think that's part of. Honestly, I think that's part of this process. When you buckle down and you're saying no to yourself a lot, even if you're saying not now, when you finally get to the time that it's now, it feels weird. I think a lot of people struggle with that, actually spending their money. Yeah. Oh, they do. It's uh, it, it's hard. And, you know, if, if you call me up and you made 
$800,000 a year, $500,000 a year, and you had a $5 million net worth, I oh, would tell you to just go do it. Do it now. I would yeah. tell you go do it. But this is a, it's 50% of your liquid savings. Mm-hmm. That does get kind of catch you a little bit. Uh, and, a moment there and you're catching the throat. You know? And I think it d- depends also how your net worth is distributed. If all of it's in the house. Most of it is, she said. Yeah. You know, so, so. Yeah, that, that that's a good point too. That, you know, so I, you're okay to do it if you want to do it. But you don't feel good about it. That's what we're observing. Yeah. This is The Ramsey Show. Y'all, there's a lot you can't control when it comes to healthcare, but there is something you should check out that can help. Christian Healthcare Ministries. CHM is not insurance. It is budget-friendly, biblically-based health cost sharing. That means a community of members helping share the burden of each other's healthcare costs. They help people just like you in all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Learn more today at chministries.org slash budget. Question coming in about taxes. Oh, we get it. Taxes are confusing. But to help you get a better handle on them, let's unpack a question from one of our listeners. Can you explain how capital gains tax works? Yes. There are two types of income tax, mainly in America. Uh, A classic, what we call ordinary income, which is your income tax. And then there's a gain on an asset, like a share of stock, a piece of real estate. Your gain is what it goes up in value over what you paid for it with a few adjustments, but that's basically it. That is a capital gain. Your gain you've gained capital on this. So you buy a piece of land for a hundred thousand dollars and you sell it for a hundred and fifty thousand dollars after expenses, you net fifty thousand dollars. That is your capital gain. Uh, if you make under four hundred and fifty thousand dollars married filing jointly, your capital gains tax rate is only fifteen percent. It's even less if you have a small income and it's 20% if you make over 450, but it's still less than ordinary income. Uh, well, can be less than ordinary income. So uh, gen- generally is. So uh, if you, it, you know, certain assets can be exempt from capital gains taxes altogether. For instance, your personal residence, you can make up to a half a million dollars married filing jointly. 250 is a single uh, on that. If you've owned the property for two years or longer, you have zero taxes on that. So I recently sold a home uh, uh, 18 months ago, and the half a million dollar gain was tax free. You don't have to buy another house with it. It's just free. You can buy another house with it, but you don't have to. In the old days, you had to buy another house, even Mm -hmm. on your personal residence, but that's all changed now. So for online software that includes all major federal forms with low upfront pricing and no hidden fees, check out Ramsey Smart Tax for additional support. If you've got a complicated return, uh, check out Ramsey Trusted Tax Pros, like one of our endorsed local providers. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash tax, and you can learn more. RamseySolutions.com slash tax. All right, Connor's in Cincinnati. Hey, Connor, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, how are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Great. Yeah, so my wife and I are recently uh, debt-free outside of our mortgage. Good. And my question is, yeah, thank you. My question is regarding my company's employee stock purchase plan and whether whether it would be wise to invest in that as part of the 15% that goes into retirement or possibly even like a shorter term around seven to eight years. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't do it. I would invest the 15% into mutual funds because single stock and your company stock, I don't know what company you work for, but it's more risk to put basically all of your eggs in one basket as opposed to spreading them around like you would do in mutual funds. Yeah. If you're going to do, if you're going to buy company stock or any single stock, I would only do it after your home is paid for. 
and that would be baby step okay. seven activity. Now, let's say we're over there and let's look at your situation. Okay, by law, they are discounting the stock in an employee purchase 15%, correct? Correct, yeah. And um, so it, it, let's say you're putting 15% of your income into retirement, baby step four, you're taking care of your kid's college, five, you paid off your house, six. So now we're sitting at baby step seven. Do I want to play with this stock since I'm getting a 15% discount? You might. You might. You don't want more than 10% of your net worth total in single stocks because single stocks are a lot more risk. And to prove that, Connor, here will, here's what would be interesting. I don't even know your company name, okay, and I don't want to know. So or I might in a minute. We'll see. But it, right, right now I don't. <laughs> to, to make this statement, I don't need to know, know your company name. Go back and look. You pull it up. Pull up your company stock on the Internet. And look at a chart that shows the 52-week high and 52-week low. You likely will see a swing greater than 15% between the two in the yeah, last in the last year. Right now. I'm sorry? Yeah, it's a pretty large drop right now in the last year. Yeah. Okay. And so um, they sometimes they shoot up, sometimes they shoot down. But even a very stable name brand a uh, company like a Home Depot that we all know the name of or something, it's not unusual. It would be unusual for it to not vacillate as your possible high or your possible low. So my point being is the 15% discount might just be enough to cover your losses. That's a good point. In the coming year. And so the volatility of the single stock is represented there and tells you why we don't play single stocks. I don't own any. I don't own a one. Uh, and, and so that that's you know jade's right I, i'm gonna stay away from it until you get to baby step seven and even then don't think that the 15 percent is special it's all company stock is that way every everybody that has a company stock purchase plan it's 15 percent discount and uh unless it's a small closely held company and they've got a different thing but i'm talking about publicly traded big board uh new york you know new york stock exchange type stocks that's what it's going to be and you're probably going to find your 52 week high and low to be the distance between those two to be greater than 15 percent yeah i wouldn't do it yeah and then if you're so you know it's just if you got a real itch there you want to scratch put a little money in it after you're in baby step seven but you're really not it's not knocking it out of the park oh i got a 15 percent discount i made money before i started no that's my point you didn't probably all right ryan is with us in mayfield kentucky ryan what's up hey no uh, good afternoon jayden dave thanks for taking my call sure how can we help um so I have a question about um, about the budget. Uh, I've changed. Well, it's been about two years now from teaching. I taught for nine years and got a monthly check. It was easy to figure out monthly expenses and plan. But now I'm farming and I get paid five times a year. Um, it's regular. It's kind of predictable five times a year. But I'm having trouble. It's about seventy days, I think, per paycheck or something like that. And I'm having trouble planning. When I write myself a check now, you know, from the farm, what, how, how to figure out what expenses to cover? Do I, do I kind of do a, a budget for every, what two and a half months? Or I, I'm trying to figure out the logistically the best way to plan for that. Yeah, you know, the first thing is farming is a business, and so you're running a business as a separate checking account. Now, once you yeah, paid yeah, your expenses yeah. at the business, your net profit is what you can take home. So when right. you get a crop that comes in, you got to clear your you got to clear your stuff, right? And then right. What, yeah. what's left and what you don't need to replant and so on is what you can take home. Now, once you take right. that home, then you say we need X number of dollars, $5,000 a month, $7,000 a month, whatever it is yeah. to yeah. to be, exist and then you just pay, you know, you just pay yourself $5,000 a month out of the business account. Okay. Well, so, yeah, so I have how much we need and what our expenses are, and we're good on as far as um, it's about five times a year, but we do about maybe uh, $12,000 each time, and we're good on the farm, and that pays our bills. But it's it's the planning ahead of time for 70 days, like using the app, like the logistics of saying, because we pay ourselves each so, it's, a, it's a poultry flock. Keep, 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 the money, yeah, keep the money in the business account. And yeah. pay yourself a monthly pay check. Yeah, just give yourself okay. the five thousand dollars once a month. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. So instead of paying at the end of the flock when the farm gets paid, just go ahead and divide that monthly and pay myself twelve times a year instead of a five well, times a year. Yeah, that's what I would do. It's easier okay. to keep yeah, up with. Yeah, that, 
that that's probably because that's otherwise, probably I mean, because you're controlling you're controlling a hundred percent of both accounts. There's no other mm-hmm. players, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I do have a, a business partner, twenty five percent on the farm, but I'm still controlling. Like, I just cut him that disbursement. Then you, you know, may want to just set aside right. a separate personal account and chunk seventy days worth of monthly rate in there. Let's let's just call it ninety days worth. Put three months in there. Yeah. And then pay your, okay. and then just divide it, but you know, take out a third, a third, a third, and then do it again. Yeah, because looking at the monthly bills, it's like, well, okay, we it's about three thousand a month is kind of what we need, but it's like, well, if it's two and a half months, it's like, do I write myself, you know, yeah. nine thousand dollars, you know? That's where I was having trouble with the logistics on planning that, like with the budget. Yeah, it helps to have a separate account. I, I probably would open a third and account. It is. It I'd is. probably open okay. a third account separate from the business or separate from your checking and say, okay, I'm going to move this money because it helps me to visually go, all right, I just got paid for the month yes. of March. I just got paid for the month of April. Yeah. And I'm taking it out of there. He doesn't need to move three months of money into his personal checking account and try to keep from spending keep it. Keep from spending yeah, it for three be, months. That's that a terrible be, idea. That's a problem, yeah. Good, good question, man. Thank you for joining us. This is The Ramsey Show. estate and i want you to have a house but i don't want a house to have you that's why you need to get in touch with churchill mortgage to make sure you do this right these guys are awesome they'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you that means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan they show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership, and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey, to start your approval or get more information. Jade Warshaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions. And by the way, you should be. There's always uh, 50 to 200 folks hanging out with us while we do the show. Uh, It's on the glass. And free coffee and free homemade cookies. Come by and see us when you're in Nashville. Anyway, on the debt-free stage, Andrew is with us. Hey, Andrew, how are you? I am good. I'm very excited to do this screen with you. Well, we're honored to have you. Where do you live, sir? I live in Milwaukee. Milwaukee, cool. And how much debt have you paid off? $155,000. $155,000. All right. And how long did this take you? Just about 24 months. Cool. And uh, your range of income during that time? Started off a little slow, a uh, new grad physical therapist right around the start of COVID at $39,000. But then at the peak of my gazelle intensity, I got it up to $185,000. Whoa! Wow. Wow, PT! Yeah. Wow. Gracious. You. So I'm guessing 155000 was PT student debt? 100%. Oh, man. Oh, man. Wow. What inspired you to do this 24 months ago? How did you get to do the Ramsey way? Yeah, so it goes a little further back than that. Um, sometime in college, I learned that uh, I should be a little better with my money. And I knew my older brother was doing better with that at the time. And so I, I reached out to him. And I'm like, hey, what can I be doing? And he said, there's this guy. He has these steps. Mm-hmm. Step one, save $1,000. So I, I turned around. I did that. And I went back to my brother and I said, all right, done. What's step two? And he said, you have to pay off all of your debt. And I was just like, well, that just can't be right. I need to get this guy's name, figure out what he's really about. <laughs> and then, well, uh, talk to him. He's wrong. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was the exception. So then I, that's when I got immersed in all of your teachings. And then um, throughout the rest of my schooling, I, I applied everything that you were suggesting to try and limit how much more debt I was going into. And then once I graduated, I was able to hit the ground running 
once I got my big boy job. Yeah. Oof. How's it feel to be free? It feels amazing. So, so freeing. Yeah. I'm so proud of you, man. Thank you. Thank so you so much. So proud of you. Well done. So now that you're debt free, what are your big plans? So, um, yeah, now that this part of my life is over, um, the next big thing I want to work on is like building a family. And I have Colleen here with me today. And that actually leads me into my next question. And I know, I know Colleen likes surprises. So, um, Colleen, I love you so much. And your support in the last two and a half years has meant so much to me. And I really want the next part of my life with you to be, um, uh, to start a family. So, (laughs) you wouldn't (laughs) He did. marry me. Of course, I will. How dare you? <laughs> that free screen. He clicked that close pretty quick. I know, he yeah. did. Let her look the at deal, it. So I was like, all right. Trust me, I know what it looks like. <laughs> she said, I picked it out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you picked it out. Yeah, actually, Dave, I called you about a year ago to the day to ask you about how do I budget for this in the middle of like my debt free journey. And I talked to you about a year ago um, with John Deloney. So, this is a full circle. Oh, wow. Love it. Yeah. So we help oh pick out God. the ring, too. Basically, yeah, pretty much. Wow. I love wow. it. Did you put it on? Did she put it on? No, no. she didn't. Put it away. Oh, actually. yeah. Put, put, it, on, on, man. Man. put it on, man. Put it on. me. Oh, is that how it works? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is how this works, dude. Babe, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, the microphones are in the way of the kiss. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> a debt-free scream engagement all in one fell swoop. You're fairly efficient, dude. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you so much. So we don't usually let uh, the uh, the extended girlfriend be a part of the debt-free scream. She's He or she, a boyfriend, girlfriend's off to the side cheering you on until they're not. But uh, he asked to do this, and so that's why we got you up on the stage. Oh, yeah. So we're all in on this. We t- completely tricked you. You can blame us, too. <laughs> Congratulations, you two. Thank you so Thank much. Very, you. very proud of you. How long have y'all been dating? About two and a half years. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, it's time. I oh, mean, yeah. come on, man. Right, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're working on this. You're get, you've been working all the time, though. Right, yeah. So it's been tough. But now we've got a solid foundation to uh, bring the family on in. That's Love exciting. It, it sounds did, like. How you... did y'all meet? Uh, we met on Bumble. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, very good connection. We were both in school at the time, and then. Yeah, just worked out. After the first day, I knew I wanted to wanted her to be my girlfriend. Wow. I asked her the very next time I saw her. So. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You had no idea this was coming, did you? Not today. No. I, no. I didn't. I can't believe it, actually. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I did a pretty good job of just, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're pretty cool hand Luke up there. You I are. Mean, I, yeah, you are. Some He's people would have been sweating into their socks. I don't know. Man. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. exciting, exciting stuff. So it sounds like you kind of, you knew this. Do you guys have a, a date in mind or is this totally we, new? We don't. It's, um, we, we've talked about it. We've talked about future plans, but, and we have an idea of what we want to do as far as getting married. We want to kind of do our own vacation sort of thing. But as far as, as far as setting a date and all that, that's our drive out of here. That's going to be the fun conversation we look forward to. <laughs> that's Love exciting. That. Yeah. I, I have a, I have a question to ask. This is controversial. So are you on board with all of this, Colleen, all this debt-free stuff? Too late now. Oh, yeah. I mean, we wouldn't, I wouldn't be here if I were not on board with okay. it. And I'm <laughs> also debt-free, and I also paid Woo! off my student loans during our relationship together. And I probably wouldn't have if it weren't for dating him and hearing a lot of Dave Ramsey all the time. This is how it's done. I <laughs> wow. like it. I like it. Well done, you two. How Man. old are you guys? I just turned 27 yesterday. Mm-hmm. And I'm 28. All right. And so you're going to have a wonderful household income north of 200000 I don't even know what you make, Colleen, but I'm pretty, <laughs> pretty sure that's where you all will yep. be. Yep. And uh, zero student loan debt. And wow, what a great way to start. You guys got a great launching pad. I'm so proud of you. Thank Both you of you. Thank, thank you. you. And thank Exciting. you for honoring us and letting us be a little part of this whole thing and letting you show off in front of about 15 mm-hmm. or 20 million people. Yeah, <laughs> pretty cool. Not many people get engaged in front of 15 million people. Right, I was not enough. expecting that. Yeah. <laughs> you handled it good. <laughs> You guys did good. Yeah, and, and they're not even weird like on The Bachelor or something. This is like nor- <laughs> these are like normal people. Normal people. Yeah, I love is, it. You, you didn't have to go get trapped in a house somewhere or something to do it. Yeah, so. <laughs> Wow. Look at you guys. Uh, very, very cool. So proud of y'all. Way to go. Well, I think, Colleen, you paid off your student loans, too. So I think yeah. we're debt free oh, yeah. is appropriate <laughs> for, this, for the debt free scream. What do y'all think? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. For sure. I didn't practice, right. though. But. Andrew and Colleen <laughs> recently engaged, like 
three minutes ago. Uh, I love it. Congratulations, you two. From Milwaukee, Wisconsin, he paid off 155000 in 24 months, and she paid off her student loans while they were dating, too. And now, boy, they got a bright future. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, two one. one. We're, we're debt-free! Well played, dude. Well played. I love it. Very cool. <laughs> I think well, that is the third or fourth, maybe fifth over the years, engagements on the air. But it's been a while. I, don't, I think it's the first one in this building. I've never seen one. That is special. Yeah, very cool. He got her, too. She had no idea. Oh, yeah. No, she had no idea. She, well, she said she picked out the ring, but that must have been just Well, just discussing what, shopping. I, what I like. Yeah. yeah, I like one like that. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of thing. So, yeah. Very, very fun. I tell you what, they had the right conversations early on. You can tell that. It's set up. It's set up. If you can be in agreement on money, in-laws, religion, and kids before you're engaged and married, you, you got a real shot at it. That's a big thing. Way to go, you two. That's great. Very, very cool. They're fun to watch, too. That's great. So 27 years old, he made 39 up to 185. That right there. And so you can start putting some numbers with that, boys and girls. I mean, I don't know. I don't even know what she does. I didn't ask. But mm -mm. but uh, let's just say she made 50 or 60 oh, or yeah. 70 or whatever. Then they're going to be up over 200, two and a quarter, mm -hmm. two mm -hmm. and a half, something like that. At 27 years old, a quarter million dollar household income and no payments of any kind. Nope. Investing if they'll 15%. keep doing the stuff we teach, they're going to be really rich. <laughs> Real really rich, really fast. <laughs> really rich. That's what I'm That's talking about. That's a good about. thing. And be in a position to not only take care of them, their future children, uh, change your family tree, but also be in a position to uh, be outrageously, outlandishly generous in their community mm -hmm. and be, mm -hmm. a, be a help uh, rather than a hindrance to those around them. What, yep. a, what a cool way to start life. That is it right there. That's that's what they did as a blueprint for folks to follow. They did they did that right. Man, if I had only been so smart. I know. I, I, I'm looking back thinking, well... You, you start out a half million in debt. I did. At least we paid cash for the wedding. <laughs> that's one thing we did right. Hopefully they do as well. I'm sure they will. Oh, no question with these two. I love it. <laughs> this is The Ramsey Show. Jade Warshaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Well, I don't know if it gets much more fun than to have an engagement on the air. No, that's pretty, that's as good as it gets right there, Dave. Fun times. Yeah. Fun times. Thomas is with us in uh, Arlington, Texas. Hey, Thomas, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Mr. Ramsey, it's an honor to be on here, and I will be praying for Andrew and Colleen. Thank you, sir. That's a good thing. I love it. How can we help? Yes. Okay, so no debt other than my house, or our house, I should say. I'm very happily married. Um, credit card, everything's gone. Student loans gone, everything. No debt other than that. Okay, so I wanted to go over my and and uh, please like make adjustments for me because you have way more money than I do, and I would like to be like you for my family. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so my three to five year plan is uh, sell the house. We owe one hundred twenty nine thousand dollars on it. It's a it's over a five hundred thousand dollar house. Um, move into a house to where we owe no debt, and then use the money that I was going to be paying in on the mortgage for that house to give it to a smart investor for fifteen years and become the first millionaire in my family. 
Okay. Mathematically, that will work. Um, let's let's explore other options. Uh, you said you're married. Uh, the house is worth five hundred thousand um, dollars. What's your household income? Seventy one thousand. Okay. If we keep the house, you're on baby steps four, five, six. It sounds like you're investing and st- and, and trying to get the house paid off. Making seventy five thousand and doing those other things, uh, you owe one hundred and twenty nine thousand. If you found twenty five thousand a year, you'd be debt free, house and everything in five years. Uh, if you found less than that, it'd take six or seven years. <clears throat> and oh, by then the house is going to be worth a lot more. Even um, mm-hmm. do, does your wife like the house? My wife loves it, but. My wife is, she told me, I trust you wherever you lead us. That's and sweet. So I, I'm getting the, I'm getting advice from people much smarter than me before I make a decision. How old are you? <laughs> I'm, uh, wait, how old am I? 34. That's how old I am. Well, I feel like you're in a little bit of a rush to make this happen. Am I wrong? Do you feel rushed? No, you're just trying to figure out well, the smartest way to do it. Yeah, I just want to. That's why I said three to five year plan. Not yeah. If I said three to five seconds, yeah, like right now. But uh, <laughs> this is later on. This is later on down the road. Yeah. What do you do for a living? I am a welder. Okay. All right. Yes. Hmm. What we normally teach is that we don't sell the house to move forward unless we don't like the house, or it's a pinch. <laughs> it's neither here. Um, so okay. I, I am going to say it is just as good an investment into your family, your marriage and other things to keep this and systematically everybody, if we're going to keep it, we want to be intentional about how quickly we can pay it off. So let's lay that out and lay out a five-year plan, uh, a seven-year plan, whatever it is, and, and just take, uh, you know, 130,000 bucks, $129,000 and divide it into that. Right. And say, I'm going to throw extra at it. And so if we're going to stay, the price I'm going to pay is I'm going to work overtime this many months a year, um, three months a year. And that'll, that'll enable us to pay X on this. Because the good news about being a welder is you can make serious bank in OT or doing some side gigs, either one, some side hustles. I'm probably staying in the house and paying it off gradually. Um, I think you're going to end up in fairly close to the same place if you do that. That's my guess. That sounds about right. I, I, the two arguments that are playing in my head is the only reason on my side of this that I would not do that, that I would sell the house, take the money and buy something less expensive is if he wasn't, if it wasn't worth it to him to work more hours and kind of go into that sacrifice to win mentality. If he's saying, you know what, like, I like my job. I like my flow. I like my pace. I don't want to do that intensity in order to get this house paid then there, maybe, neither one is a bad answer. yeah neither one is a bad selling answer. it and moving it into a four hundred thousand dollar paid for house is not a bad answer okay mm-hmm. keeping it and systematically paying it off in the next five to seven years with plus or minus some yeah. sacrifices to do that is not a bad answer yeah both of those are going to land you 15 years from now in a fairly similar place right there's not a huge difference in these Mm-mm. two you're just going to be if you keep the house you're going to be heavier in real estate than you are in your mutual funds if you go the other way you're going to be heavier in mutual funds than you are in real estate so that's, true. that's the it's the balance of which way you want to be there um and i appreciate your wife uh saying i'll go along with whatever i trust you that's very sweet um, yeah. That's a good indicator that you're a good man. True that. Um, and uh, uh, but I have also learned over 40 years of marriage that some of the best investments I make are into our lives. That's true. Into our marriage. Into a, you know, this is a trip she really wants to do. This is a, she would she doesn't like cars, but this is a car <laughs> she she really likes. Okay, I buy I buy her, I'm the kid with a Tonka truck. Mine is Mama and Tonka truck. <laughs> I, I buy her cars that I want. And so, she but, has and, no, but, she, but there, she has she no dog wants in the hunt. A happy wife, happy life thing, you know, yeah. and it's not, not that she's a princess or that his wife's a princess at all. That's not the point. But the point is there is a value to all the hard work that we do to uh, get a quality of life out of that. Absolutely. Yeah. Good Absolutely. stuff. Good, Good question. Stuff. Dan is in Denver. Hi, Dan. Welcome to the Ramsey show. 
Hey, Dave, how you guys doing today? Better than we deserve. What's up? Hey, I just recently changed uh, jobs. Um, I recently, I mean, in May of last year, um, uh, we have no debt other than our house. Um, we do maintain a three thousand dollar balance on a credit card, only because we're told that showing the activity of paying something off helps improve our credit score, which we don't really need, but we just do it just to. Because that's what we're told. Okay. When I changed jobs, um, my 401k, I stopped contributing uh, because the new employer was not associated with uh, the company that I was using. With the new with the new company, I have um, I do have a 401k and I do have my 15 percent going in there, in there uh, contributing to that, but they don't match. So my question is on the on on the first older 401k i have about 245 in there what do i do with that to 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 get to earn interest or to make it grow um or 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 do something i i feel like i'm just sitting here yeah just click on smartvestor at ramseysolutions.com and find one of the uh, brokers that we endorse that we have vetted that you're comfortable working with they'll have the heart of a teacher and here's the phrase you need to remember a direct transfer rollover to an IRA. That means that the money is not coming to you. It's coming straight into the mutual fund, into the IRA. There's zero taxes on that. If you have a traditional IRA now, you direct transfer it to a traditional. If you have a Roth IRA or Roth 401k now, you direct transfer to a Roth, whatever it is. But they're going to move the money from the 401k directly into the mutual funds that you purchase, and they'll send them the send the notice for you over to your old company and cause that to happen. If you lay your paws on it, they have to withhold 20%, and you don't want them to do that. So you, the direct transfer is the key thing, and I always take my 401k with me. Yeah, I would. Because a lot of the stats on the amount of 401ks that people forget about and they're just left floating in the air is crazy. Yeah. I'm probably not going to forget about 245000 Not that much, but, but you um, would be surprised, Dave. But just the same. You're right. I wouldn't be surprised. It's crazy. And the other thing is you'll get a better rate of return if you watch your own investments and manage them actively mm-hmm, with mm-hmm. your SmartVestor Pro than you will just leaving it behind as a memory back there. And that's a lot of money to just be floating out there in la-la land, so to speak. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And that, cut up that credit card, please. Yes, that's a bunch of crap. You're chasing dollars. You know, get rid of it. The, the, worshiping at the altar of the FICO is a bad idea. <laughs> this is The Ramsey Show. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. Headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Thank you for joining us. My co-host today, Jay Warshaw, Ramsey Personality. We're here to answer your questions about your life and your money. 888-825-5225. Colby's with us in Las Vegas. Hi, Colby. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, how you doing? Great, man. What's up? So I um, just recently graduated high school, got a job as a car salesman. I still have yet to buy a car. I'm just using like a hand-me-down. My dad gave it to my brother, gave it to me, then I'm going to give it to my sister in about eight months or so. So my dealership, if they'll pay, if you buy a car, they'll pay your payment. They'll pay $500 of your payment every month for 36 months. And I was planning on buying a car cash, but I was just curious if I should, you know, take advantage of this and just put as much money down to get 500 bucks a month and obviously have the money to pay it off if I need to. But, you know, free money, is that something I should do or shouldn't do? 
Have you asked them if they will give you money towards you buying a car in cash from them? No, it's just they just do a payment. The, the owner of the dealership I work at will give you the, um, the money. No. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, I was planning. I have about about forty thousand dollars saved, and I was just planning on just buying some cash, and if not, or doing the the payment. Where did you get forty thousand dollars while you were in high school? <laughs> um, I never spent it. Really, I just I wore I hustled, I got as much many jobs every year since I started working. I've pretty much tripled how much I've made at every job. What was your be- What was your best job? What's the thing you made the most money at? Uh, this one. I'm making about. Seven to ten grand a month, give or take. Okay, so you're already selling some cars. Yes, yeah, I've got I've got a smiling face, I guess. And you graduated <laughs> from high school last spring. Yeah, about yeah. Good job. So you're 18 years old. Yes, sir. Wow, very impressive. Mm-hmm. And I was just planning on buying something, like probably a truck, something nice, not not too. And they give you crazy money off on trucks. Yeah. Um, well. Here's the the way I ask these. We answer questions like this: is which of the answers puts me in the best position, giving given anything can happen ten years from today? Okay, ten minutes from today, if that's all you're thinking about, you do this deal, right? Because it's really juicy. It really sounds appealing. Ten years from today, um, you work there another year and a half and something bad happens to the dealership or whatever, and they just decide they don't want you anymore, and you get to leave for whatever reason, you've still got 18 months of $500 payments left because they're yeah. not going to pay these payments if you're gone. Yeah. So, I yeah, mean... Yeah, I was just planning on just saving the rest of the money I have and having them pay the payment, and I could pay it off cash so I'm going to get fired or quit or find something better. Yeah, and I assume this needs to be a new car for this deal, right? Mm-hmm. It does, yes. Yeah, so you're going to lose your butt. They go down. Well, they, in, they go down in value like a rock. If they were yeah. really, if they really wanted to help you, no, they're this, they're trying to get him to be a part of the what he's selling, brand. part of what you're selling. Yeah, so you can yeah, you can talk about the, you just bought the same thing the mm-hmm, same way, mm-hmm. da 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 da, and that's the reason for this. It's not necessarily to be a blessing. Um, the uh, so now I, I I if you were uh, like one of my nephews or something I would tell you not to do this I I uh, I, I understand the appeal of it it sounds kind of fun it sounds kind of cool it sounds like there's nothing could go wrong but number one we don't tell people to buy new cars unless they have a million dollar net worth because you can't absorb the loss you're gonna lose your butt you buy a forty thousand dollar truck whatever it's gonna be worth half of that in thirty six to forty eight months. And so you need to be buying things that are going up in value, not down in value. This is your largest asset, and it's going the wrong direction. True and that. And that, that's the problem with the scenario. So you're being tempted into something that you're not financially really ready for, uh, even though you have the money to pay cash for it. But you're, you don't have the net worth to absorb the loss of value that you're going to experience here. And so we tell folks – not to buy a new car unless you got a million dollar net worth. So that that would be the answer to the question. And in this case, you're signing up for car payments. I know they said they're going to pay them, but not if you're not there or they're not there. That's true. And so you're you're on the hook, and you're going to find out when things go sideways the way this stuff looks. It's not good. So no, I, I don't want that. Um, you know, at all. If you were going to write a check and pay cash for the car today, I would tell you not to do it too. By the way. Same thing. Right. Brand, new, brand exactly. new truck, you know, and, and I'm glad you're making money selling cars. I'm glad you're helpful to people, and mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with that. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate a good salesman. I really appreciate that you're doing this at 18 years old. You're really pulling this off. Well done. That's good. Uh, just go make yourself a big old pile of money, man, and, <laughs> and don't get sucked into owning a new car. And that's, that's exactly what I would do in this scenario. Now, if you want to get rid of the little dinky car and get you a $10,000 truck and you pay cash for it out of your money, That'll be fine. That'll be fine. But um, if uh, if the only way you get to work there is you have to be a customer, that's a problem. 
that's a problem. So I agree. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Alex is in Baltimore. Hey, Alex, how are you? How you doing, Dave? Good. Good. How can we help? Uh, I'm uh, my wife and I currently uh, we're taking your piece uh, university at our church uh, currently on step two, but we are kind of looking ahead at the college plans for our two children. Uh, we had a small savings account for each of them. We moved our daughters over to a 529, uh, uh, but our son, uh, he's six years old and he's autistic, and we're not quite certain uh, about his uh, college future. So we're, we're very hesitant to set up a 529 for him. And just kind of wanted to get your input about whether, you know, there's any other options or should we just kind of take the chance and, and go with the 529 for him? Uh, so I, I wouldn't. Set aside for his future. Yeah, I wouldn't. I would, just, I would just have a mutual fund that's in your name and your wife's name. And you just put a little label on that file with his name on it. But he doesn't own any of it. He has no rights to it. It's just your money you're saving for him. The same amount you're saving for your daughter for college. But we're going to help him with... Uh, maybe he's able to, maybe he's high functioning, he's able to go to school, mm-hmm. uh, higher education, or maybe he's going to go trade school, or maybe he's going to study code or whatever. I don't know. But you'll have some money, Nick, uh, earmarked for him, but that has no constraints on it. The only disadvantage to that is, is you've got to pay taxes on it mm-hmm. as it grows. But whoop de doop yeah. you need the control of it. You don't need it dropping into his name, um, and he has legal rights to it, and then, uh, you know, makes some bad decisions. That's not good for him or you. Mm-hmm. So this is just a yeah. taxable brokerage account. It's just simple. Invest just in open a mutual, mutual fund. Open a mutual fund, and that's yours. Yep. But you just kind of write his name on the outside of the file mm-hmm. in your file drawer, so yep. you, you know that that's that's a uh, little little Henry or whatever his name is, right? That's right. his deal, right? And that's he's got access to it whenever he needs it. There's no penalty for that. No, none whatsoever. But you'll pay taxes on it as it grows. Right. Yeah. This is the Ramsey Show. Have you ever met a natural born leader? Well, let me answer that for you. No, you haven't. I've been to the hospital. It's a boy. It's a girl. They never come out and say, it's a leader. Leaders are built. They're not born. The great thing about it is you get to decide what kind of leader you're going to be. You can be loud and crazy like me. You can be quiet and very detailed and still be a leader. There's lots of ways to be a leader. If you want to take your leadership to the next level, Join us and the thousands of business leaders who have already grabbed their seats for Entree Leadership Summit this May 30th through June 2nd in Nashville. You're going to learn from some of the best minds in leadership, like Malcolm Gladwell, Dr. Jordan Peterson will be speaking, Manit Shohan will be speaking, Willie Robertson of Duck Dynasty will be speaking, I'll be speaking, Ken Coleman, Dr. John Deloney will be speaking. It is quite a lineup for the week. And uh, we'd love to have you. Brian, my friend Brian Buffini is joining us, too. Yeah, you don't want to miss this. It's going to be incredible. Entree Leadership Summit, total game changer for leaders and business owners. RamseySolutions.com slash summit. We've got just a couple tickets left. It is basically sold out. But if you want to come in, that's it. Entree Leadership Summit. At, um, at uh, well, the way that you get your tickets, let me try one more time. RamseySolutions.com slash summit. That will get you there. So, Jade, I just got this uh, at the break from our real estate team. Uh, inventory on real estate is increasing year over year at a higher rate and is still well below historical averages. We still have a housing shortage, even though number of homes for sales increased 67% over last year. Mm-hmm. The total number of unsold homes including homes that are under contract, has increased only by 13%. Interesting. Newly listed homes are well below historical averages, and we are at 15.9% fewer homes being listed compared to last year. The median price of homes for sale 
has increased 7.8% in February, lower than January's growth rate. Okay. But we're up housing prices nationally, up January, up February, much like we predicted yes. when we did the real estate live stream last fall. We told you there was going to continue to be a shortage. We we're going to see a 7 to an 8% increase in prices in 2023, mm -hmm. and we are currently tracking for 7.8%. And uh, homes are spending 67 days on the market, which is 23 days longer than last year, but still shorter than most times in history when they run 90 to 120 days. I mean, if you want to compare the market to crazy town, which was 2020 and 2021, where things I remember when we sold our house, I mean... Your timing the, to be a Ramsey personality and move from Miami was incredible. Well, our real estate agent was apologizing because we only had eight offers. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's <laughs> just slacking <laughs> off right there. You know, it's like, sorry, we didn't get, you know, that day, the day of the open house. Sorry, you know, we only had four today and only, only, only four the next day. So translation, <laughs> if you're not putting your home on the market because you think the market is slow... You're statistically speaking wrong if you're not putting your home on the market because you're thinking the real estate market is down. Statistically speaking, on a national average, you're wrong. So you great mean time the to sky sell a house is not when, falling? Great time to sell a house when the house, when the, when there's a housing shortage. We have more houses for sale than we did this time last year. But again, we're still coming out the back of crazy town last year, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we, we're, we're returning to a more normal level of inventory with still more buyers than sellers. Still. Even with high interest rates, but the re interest rates do not drive the market as much as supply demand drives the market. Meaning meaning the prices are going to go up as long as there are more buyers than sellers. There's a housing shortage. You're always going to see prices. That's why we've got an 8%, 7.8% price increase or schedule. I mean, that's what we're tracking for annually. Now, it's not 32% during crazy town. Right. And that's what people can't get used to. So... Um, <laughs> I was on Megan Kelly's podcast the other day. <laughs> She's been a friend a long time. And she said, so what do you mean? I said, well, Megan, it's like if you're driving your car like 90 or hundred miles an hour, and then you slow down to 45, it feels like you're, you're like you're crawling. Yeah. And she goes, I've never had that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. She, I think she obeys the law, but yeah, there you go. So, um, I just feel like we have short memories. As, as as American people, our memory is is so we compare, short. We compare not to historical distance, you're right, but in, to what the last thing I felt last, like Friday. That's what it is. You We're know? basing it on pure emotion. And are we, you know, what are we hearing on the yeah. uh, god-awful news channel, right? Yeah, that's what it uh, is. Just telling us the world's coming to an end, world's coming to an end. If you didn't know the world's coming to an end. And you're going to die of a tornado, too, by the way. I just think that's a problem, though, when we, we're we listening to a talking head tell us something contrary to what our own experience is telling us, what our own memory should tell us. <laughs> yeah. And th the reason I put these this data out when I got the email at the break, I thought, you know, John Deloney talks about facts yep. are your friends. Yep. When you have fear or you're worried or whatever, facts are or your friends in the middle of an emergency situation stop and analyze the facts facts are your friends facts what's the friends. real situation here and what you most of the time run into when you do that is it calms you down and you say i'm not going to sweat the small stuff and most everything that i'm worried about is small stuff in the that's scope true. of your life yeah in the scope of your life yeah that's it so there you go. Kelly is with us in Chicago. Hi, Kelly. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Hi, Jade. Thanks for taking my call. No problem. How are um, you doing? Good. How are you guys? Good. How can okay, we help? So I'm just calling with, just calling with a question. Um, so I purchased a house one year ago. We closed on April 29th of last year. Um, purchased this home for 320000 I currently still owe 298 dollars 
Um, and I'm just calling. So I originally purchased this home um, with the intent of living here with somebody. That relationship is no longer there, and he never even ended up moving in with me. So I make these payments by myself, and I'm feeling... Um, so I work full time and then I also have a part time job and I'm feeling like maybe I'm a little house poor and was considering selling. Um, but I'm wondering if selling this soon would be a mistake. How much are your monthly payments? 1800 for just the mortgage. And how much is your monthly income? Um, it varies. I pick up a lot of overtime. Um, I make $42 an hour full time as a nurse and then part time. I work like 20 hours. How much so money are you bringing month. in a month? Um, about 4,500. Yeah. You're starving to death. Mm-hmm. It's so not, it's not fun, is it? Feeling. <laughs> no, <laughs> I was like, I think it might be time. Uh, as long as you guys think it's wise, I think that's probably what I'll end up doing. Why wouldn't you? Because you're um, feeling you're feeling the pinch already. What's what? And, and it's tied to a negative relationship as well. So what's sure. what would keep you staying in it? Do you foresee your income going up drastically? Is there something that we don't know about that's no? Well, you I hope? contemplated renting out a room because it is a three bedroom home and just me living here. So I contemplated renting out a room, um, but I'm thinking with all of the fees and you never know what's going to go wrong with the house. I just think that I would be blindsided. I'd be better off selling and like stockpiling money and paying cash for one, you know, in the next year or two. I like that. Um, In the short term. Yeah. In the short term, I would be moving back home, um, which I don't love that idea, but um, it's temporary. So I would get out of the home. I'm not really sure why you've got to move back in with your parents. If you take some, if you, I mean, you're making an, an income, you can't rent in your area. I could. I just thought that would be the cheapest, easiest way. I mean, I would pay rent there, too, so I guess it would be the same thing. Yeah, I think I'd get me an inexpensive rental and sell it. And uh, the moral of the story, ladies and gentlemen, is never buy a home with someone you're not married to. Well, it's a committed. You're not married. If you were married, it'd be committed. This is The Ramsey Show. Jade Washall, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Chad and Tracy are with us on the debt-free stage in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions headquarters. Hey, guys, how are you? Great. Doing how are fantastic. you? fantastic. Welcome, welcome. Where do y'all live? Columbus, Ohio. Cool. Welcome to Nashville. And how much debt have you paid off? We paid off $218,000. All right. Wow. How long did this take? Just around eight years. Okay, way to go. And your range of income during that time? We started off making about 119. Mm-hmm. Uh, dipped down to maybe 109. And now we're about 149. Cool. What do y'all do for a living? I am a recruiter at a manufacturing company. Mm-hmm. And I'm in procurement in the automotive industry. Ah, very good. Okay. So- 218,000, eight years. What kind of debt was this? A variety of student loans, credit cards, um, line of credit. HELOC. Yeah. Mm. You pay off the whole house or just yes. the HELOC? We so your debt free house and everything? Yeah, everything. Whoop, whoop. I love it. Look at it, weird people. Good job, y'all. Cool. <laughs> so what's the house worth? The house, I think I just saw the other day, is worth about 430 All right. I love it. That's Good for exciting. you guys. When you guys said you paid off the house, somebody to the side over there got really, really excited. <laughs> <laughs> so these two, uh, Jeff and Julie Reyes, are our mentors because they taught us our debt, or I'm sorry, our class that we took. Our um, first FPU class. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and wow. We are, they're just awesome. So they really motivated us to take the class to get debt free. So we owe a lot of our um, story to them. That's Very exciting. Cool. Where did you take the class? 
we took the class at our church, which was Discover Christian Church in about 2014, I believe it was. Yes. Excellent. And Dave, if I could, if I could, if I may for a second, tell you a little bit of history. Mm -hmm. Um, I started to get into real estate investment, um, uh, not not a little bit of parallels to you. Mm -hmm. In 2008, 2009, everything crashed. Mm -hmm. Uh, We couldn't find rentals. And I had to file bankruptcy mm. in 2012. And uh, so that was quite a bit of struggle. In fact, I filed the paperwork on my birthday, which is wow. pretty exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, but you know, I, I asked Tracy if we could take financial peace. I've been wanting to take it, wanting to take it. And finally, in January, uh, the Reyes is over here. Uh, we're teaching a class, and, and um, that started our journey. Oh, wow. Very cool. Very cool. So really from the bottom all the way up then. Mm. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's a long trick. It is. Okay. Congratulations, y'all. Mm-hmm. And we, we, we have two boys that uh, have some debilitating diseases, and uh, that's our motivation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, get you where you can take care of them instead of paying some bank. Mm-hmm. Amen. Exactly. I love it. Amen. Amen right. and amen. Well done, y'all. How's it feel to be completely free? Feels amazing. Yeah, I, we haven't been able to walk on the grass yet because it's been winter time, but, uh, <laughs> but we're excited to do that. And, you know, along this journey, it's been fantastic from a standpoint of us being debt free uh, to uh, now having uh, wills and special needs trusts set up for our boys. Absolutely. Um, and knowing that if something happens to me or something happens to Tracy, we're going to be okay. Mm. Yeah. And, and they're going to be okay. They're going to be okay. Yeah. And everybody's taken care of in, in uh, the family tree that we started. Amen. And uh, just very blessed. And I'm so thankful uh, that God uses the Ramsey solution uh, to reach people like us, uh, that we are able to now take care of our family tree. And, and subsequently, we've taught uh, about five or six FPU classes. Yes. Wow. Uh, okay. We've, we've taught smart money, smart kids. Wow. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Very <laughs> good. You've we're just, we're all in. Doing it all. Excellent. Right. Well, thank you. Paying it forward for sure. Mm-hmm. Right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So when you're teaching a class or when you were going through, what do you think most often is the light bulb moment where someone says, all right, I'm doing it. You see the you see the the light come on over their head, right? You can you, you see their faces change. When do you think that happens most? What do you think drives that? I think when they start to pay off, you know, the smallest at first, mm-hmm. and they can cross that off the list. So the snowball effect. I think that really they're like, wow, I got this paid off. I'm going to move to the next one. I think that's very motivating, and I think that's where I see a lot of the students in our class um, get really excited. And uh, for me, you know, what I've heard recently, or a lot of when people have had that I've had it moment mm-hmm. when they've ha- when they reach that I've had it moment when when they when preparedness and opportunity meet mm. and um, and a lot of our folks uh, heed that and uh, carry on their journey so what was your I've had it moment I think we got so tired of, like, we would use the whole, what was that, like, debt consolidation loan, and now I look back and I laugh going, why would you think that would work? And, you know, after after you've, like, you know, took the class, taught the class, it's just not going to work, because it's, you have to, you don't just move the debt, you have to get rid of it, you have to think differently, you have to change your whole life to think about Dave's principles and use them. And I look a lot like fitness to me, that's the same thing. Like when you go on a diet, you Mm -hmm. can't just lose the weight and it stays there. You have to think differently. So it's similar with money Mm. to stay out of debt. So for me, um, I think we were just so tired of, oh my gosh, we have this to pay and we would fight about money. And it's like, what can we do? So when Chad said, let's take the class at church, I'm like, you know, it can't hurt. Let's try it. So we did. And here we are. (laughs) And we did treat the HELOC like a pet. We kept it around for a long period of time. It's not a good idea. So if anyone's listening, just not a good idea. (laughs) So what you're saying is behavior matters. It's not just about mathematics on paper. Right. Change your habits. Yes. If you can't, if you don't, as Dave says, if you don't have the money, don't buy it. (laughs) Put those words into action for sure. Way to go, you guys. We're so proud of you. 
Thank you. Thank yeah, you. You look like a power couple, man. I mean, it's pretty incredible. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well done. Very well done. And thanks for teaching the class. For teaching oh, Stanford yeah. Peace University to others. You've had a huge impact on other people's lives, I'm sure, like your mentors did on yours. Right. So very, very well done. And I do have to say, if it's okay, my youngest son, who's 15, Noah, we actually had our um, all of our debt paid except for our house probably in 2016, Chad. Is that right? Something like that. Um, so we were excited to be debt-free in 2016 without the house, you know, being paid off. And Noah would remind us, Mom, um, we're not debt free till the house is paid. <laughs> <laughs> There's Don't one in every family. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Way to go, dude. I like it. Yeah, he, Very picked, good. he picked up on the podcast for sure. <laughs> Very fun. <laughs> Love that. Hey, we got the Live and Give bundle for you. Uh, that includes the Total Money Makeover book to give to somebody, Thank Baby you. Steps Millionaire's book to give to somebody. You're probably right there or on your way to that as well. And another uh, Financial Peace University membership. You'll be able to give that away because it's the world y'all are living in now. Mm-hmm. Way to go, you guys. Very cool. Well, let's get the gentleman to, uh, do they want to come around front of the yes. stage sure. there and uh, work this out or up on even? He's going to yep. come up on. That'll work too. Works for me. Good stuff. So the, their names and ages. This is Noah on the left with the orange shirt. Mm -hmm. Uh, He is 15. Mm -hmm. And this is Jacob on the right. He is 23. All right. Very cool. All right, guys. Here we go. I love it. $218,000 paid off in eight years, making $119 to $149. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, two, one. one. We're We're debt-free. Yeah. Way to go, you guys. That's how it's done. I love it. There's a domino effect there. And I, you see it with the first coordinators. Mm-hmm. They taught them, and then they've coordinated over five, six classes. Yeah. And it's just a domino effect of financial peace. Yeah, it's very cool. And your class that you started up has got, you had a limit of 1,000 people. We had to cut it off. You had to cut it off. You got it full. It's full. We had to cut it off. We've met twice. So for anybody asking, because I've had several people come in and say, can I still sign up for the class? We had to cut it off, but don't worry. We'll do it again. Yeah, we're going to do it again. Bet you. You got to, you know, and you know. I don't know. Y'all may y'all may find out Jade is tough. <laughs> I had to get on to some folks the other night. She might be a tough coordinator. Did you get on somebody? I had to get on somebody about their credit cards the other night. There you so, go. There you know, go. I'm we'll telling see. you, don't, don't, don't be messing around in that class. <laughs> you got a tough coordinator. The real deal right there. Oh, yeah. We're Man, getting some Man, that's such folks a great out. story. Way to go, you guys. You're amazing. Good stuff. This is The Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, Luke 11, 8. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is your, his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. What version is that? Okay. <laughs> wow. It's not even recognizable. Okay. Andrew, Andy Andrews <laughs> says, I believe persistence is a major key to success in any great endeavor. I want to remind folks to persist in whatever they're tackling at the moment. Good Love stuff. that. Jade Warshaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. You jump in. We'll talk about your life and your money. Rashonda is with us in Boston. Hi, Rashonda. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Good. How can we help? So I am in a little bit of, I'm, I have a current stressor right now concerning um, some past debt I, I incurred when I was in my early 20s. I'm 27 now, and I'm learning very quickly um, after my 25th birthday, I am paying dearly in my late 20s for mistakes I've made uh, financially in my early 20s. Uh, my current stressor would be my car debt, my car loan. 
Um, it's my second vehicle, and um, I got it a year ago from February, from Valentine's Day. And I am wondering if I'm, I don't have the remaining options because I I rolled over negative equity, and right now I'm looking at roughly thirty one thousand for the payoff on this car. It's a Lexus. It's a 2016 Lexus. And um, I am wondering, I know you say not to get what you call fleeced, but um, I'm wondering if just to kind of cushion and alleviate some of that stress right now. Have you looked up what the car is worth? I did a KBD yeah. on what the mile, what mileage is for it now, mm-hmm. and it's roughly sixteen six fifty. Uh, on a private sale or trade in? On a trade in. Okay, so private sale be twenty, and you're thirty one thousand. Did you say you leased this? No, I initially I financed. I've never leased. Oh, you financed. So you okay? You rolled so negative actual, equity into it. Your actual payoff is really thirty one thousand. Correct. You're sure of that? Correct. Um, last time I checked. That's what not is your interest rate? The per diem. My interest is like almost 9%. Hmm. Now, when you said this was your second vehicle, you, you're meaning that you had a vehicle and you rolled the equity, the negative equity into this, not that you own two vehicles, right? Correct. Okay. Just double checking that. What's your income? Mm, my, I just started a new job. I'm a student, so... Uh, it's kind of choppy. My, I work, I, I earn like 15 an hour. I literally just started that job. But I am, I've always had a job. It's just that. On a normal month, how much money do you bring home? On a normal month, I'll say right at 4000 okay. Um, And I assume you have no money. Correct. Okay. Is this yeah. the only debt you have? Or is there more? No. I have credit card debt before the loan. How much? Uh, I'll say that is about thirteen, fourteen thousand. Okay. Well, there's no question mathematically. This is killing you, mm-hmm. and I, I feel I you. made some very yeah. stupid. Well, I feel I feel you. Uh, me too. I've done it too. But I mean, I, I feel the I feel the math pinch in these numbers. You're this is a real problem. It's a real struggle for you. Yeah. And so what happened is you had a car that you're upside down in, and then you bought another car, and you're further upside down in it. And so we've double dipped. We've got a double hole. Mm-hmm. You know, that's where $10,000 comes from because you're roughly $10,000 in the hole. Um, right. <clears throat> you don't have money saved anywhere, do you? No, she doesn't. No. No, we already asked that. No. Oh, no. yeah, 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 yeah. I okay. was my my question was I thought I would have the option I researched it I don't think that's an option. My question because I mind you I've exhausted as much as I can in terms of just looking at my bank and then other. I thought well if I try to lease it, um, could I, or if I don't lease it could I try to sell it privately put that money toward the debt and then get my credit or not the debt my credit card get the credit score up and who, then try who, to get a consumer loan and put that toward I said no because that's I think that's technically illegal because I don't have the title if I try to sell well, it. Oh you won't be able to get the title unless you pay it off. Yeah. Who's got the loan? Right. Who holds the loan? Uh my bank NFCU. Have you talked to them about do you have a local branch there? No, the closest one is about seventy miles away, Newport, Rhode Island. Okay. I would try to get someone on the phone there and discuss with them the idea that you sell the car, they release the title, and you sign a note, a personal line of credit, a personal loan for the difference, the $10,000 difference. Um, Because that's really where they are today anyway. They're not fully collateralized on this loan. They only have a $20,000 car as collateral against a $31,000 loan. And by selling it, they have a better chance of getting their money. You follow me? Okay. And so, okay. but it's it, it it long distance on a phone call with a bank like that. I you know I give you less than fifty percent chance you pull it off. But if you can talk them into it, that is your best case scenario. Your next best case scenario is uh, find a credit union, a local bank, just to loan you ten thousand dollars. Again, very difficult 
but uh, yeah. you've got to cover the $10,000 hole to get out of this, either with the current bank accepting a, a note for that amount um, or you coming up with a cash by signing a note somewhere else. But I would rather you be $10,000 in debt somewhere else, even on a credit card. Mm-hmm. If you could get a $10,000 credit card, I would rather you be that than be $30,000 in debt on this car. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, that leaves you carless. Right, she's mm-hmm. got to get something when we to do drive. that, and so then you've got to work like a crazy person and scratch together a thousand, two thousand dollars, and pay cash for a little garage sale car, something that's pitiful. Yeah. You need a pitiful car mm-hmm. <laughs> that you pay cash yeah. for with no payments, pitiful and no payments, and then that breaks the back on this cycle. But there is no lease on it. There's no leasing it. That's not going to work because all of it's going to be rolled into that anyway. Yeah. The 31000 is going to be rolled into that, and it's still, it doesn't go away. Your payment is your payment is your payment, and your lease payment might actually be higher. And so um, that's easier. So, yeah, but the, the trick is uh, working your tail end off, taking like 8,000 hours of work. I mean, you just work until you're about to drop. You know, go go work six jobs, whatever you've got to do. Scratch together some money and or borrow that some portion of that $10,000 hole that you're in, put that, and then if someone comes along and gives you $20,000 for the car, you put the $10,000 from the loan or the work with it, that gets the car paid off, and you can give the title to them, but you're going to have this other loan over to the side. You see what I'm saying? Okay. But you can't okay. sell the car to someone unless you can give the bank $31,000, or they will agree to let you sign a note for the difference. Okay. And release the title. The title's got to be released in the transaction. It's not illegal. Okay. It's just the buyer won't do it. Okay. Because okay. nobody buys a car, you don't get the title. Okay. It's pretty scary in Massachusetts. They don't play games about, like, <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't. Like they shouldn't. They shouldn't. I mean, you shouldn't sell a car. You can't get the title. I mean, so you've got it. Right. But you can get it all set up to where it's perfectly legal. What I'm describing is perfectly legal in any state. Because if okay. you give them $31,000 or they agree to let you sign a note for the difference, doesn't matter. They're going to, they, you know, they've, you've now got a way to release the title to the buyer. And that's what you have to do that. Yeah, because once she comes up with the difference, they don't know the difference. I mean, she's just giving them the money for the car. Exactly. So, of course, they're going to give her the title. So if you find somebody to loan you 10 and you put it on the market for 20, you know, and yeah. you, you can get Joe to buy it for 20. Mm-hmm. Joe gives you 20. You give him a bill of sale. And, you know, you, you put the other 10 with it, and now you've got a clear title to hand to Joe. And that's the process that you'll use. But, yeah, that's what you're going to have to scratch and claw to get out of this because it's a deep hole. I'm so sorry. Yeah, that's I've been a, in that kind of mess. It's no fun. That's a tough hole to get out of. But you can get out of it, and you will get out of it. Absolutely. Good show today, gang. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace. And that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jade. Look, if you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.